staying in the state of Texas for our second game this week, Alabama at Texas A&M. Alabama is 9-1 and one in its last 10 against Texas A&M. However, Texas A&M won 2021. It was close last year in Tuscaloosa. In general, I think the storyline for this game is, of course, there's Jimbo versus Nick Saban, former Saban assistant, and we remember the back and forth they had just a few uh, years ago in the offseason. But in general, I think Alabama is a vulnerable team atop the SEC West. This feels like Texas A&M's chance to get a win, kind of take control of the SEC West and beat Alabama. If they don't beat Alabama here, I think it's a pretty big disappointment for Jimbo Fisher and Texas A&M. Like I said, this is a very vulnerable, a flawed Alabama team, albeit one that does seem to be finding itself over the last six quarters or so, completely took care of business against Mississippi State last week. I think the, to me, the the area that's going to determine this game, line of scrimmage and quarterback play. Texas A&M, the last two weeks against Auburn and Arkansas, you can question the offensive lines for both teams, uh, but this defensive line has been getting after the quarterback, and I think Alabama's offensive line is still a question mark here. Can A&M create some pressure? Can they get Jalen Milrow in third and longs? Same thing, Alabama's defensive front is just as good here, creating a lot of havoc at the line of scrimmage. Can they get after Max Johnson and slow down that passing game for Texas A&M? So I've got my eye on quarterback play and line of scrimmage on Saturday in this SEC West showdown. Oh, where do I start? Let's let me make the case. I'm going to I'm going to rattle off a list of bullet points as to why I am picking Texas A&M to win outright. Number num, number one, Vegas agrees with me. Vegas is begging you to take Alabama minus two and a half. They want they think everyone in the country is going to look at Bama and go Bama. I'm, I'm only have to lay two two points. All I got to do is win by a field goal. Eh, Vegas is begging you to take Alabama. So that's number one. Vegas agrees with me. Texas A&M. First one to 13 probably wins. So tiny point spread. Okay. Either either way. Um, I think it's a really blue collar battle in the trenches. Um, you mentioned it. Texas A&M, 14 sacks. And I believe almost, what, 30 tackles for loss in the last two games against Auburn and Arkansas. Not, not as good as Alabama talent-wise, but certainly dominant performances by all those young, talented five stars that are now. Cooper's been really good. Walter Nolan's been really good. Like there's a lot of really talented defensive players on that front seven that are coming into their own and pressuring the quarterback like heck. I was watching the Arkansas game at one point, believing that they had bounty gate going. Like I was not even like every time they get a sack, they're like, I, I, I'm I'm convinced that Jimbo is is they got NIL dollars for sacks uh, at at Texas A&M. That's my opinion, uh, by the way. Um, they played. Here's another one. They played against Jalen Milrow. Last year, Jalen Milrow was the starting quarterback. So that quick twitch burst that he's got, that first step out of the pocket, the big arm, because he's good at going down the field. He's not good at the quick throwing game. They have, they know what to expect in space because I think Jalen Milrow's speed can really trick you if you're not used to playing against it. AM played an entire game against it last year and almost beat him. So I think Milrow's speed won't sneak up on them. That's another one. The culture at AM might be a problem. And that was the question about this organization for years. But they get up for big games all the time. And they get up for Alabama. They, I think they are up for this game. I think the crowd is up for this game. I think the community is up for this game. I absolutely think they're going to lose two more somewhere else down the road. But I don't think they lose this one. Uh, I think they. I, Max Johnson is as qualified a backup quarterback as you can get in college football. He made a couple of bad mistakes against Arkansas, but largely was distributing the football very well. They've got a lot of weapons in space you can throw it to. This is about the quick throwing game and pressuring the quarterback. And Milrow does not necessarily handle the quick, short, intermediate passing game as well as he does down the field. So those are all my reasons why I'm taking A&M. The one big argument for Alabama, aside from great defense, is that Jalen Milrow has the legs to escape the pressure. And if he beats them and the pass is break and the defense breaks down and the pass rush doesn't stay disciplined in their lanes, and they're playing man coverage and guys are running around, Jalen Milrow will kill you, kill you with his legs. So I'm taking AM, and that's my reasoning. But uh I don't I also don't think Alabama's gonna lose a game the rest of the way, and I think AM loses twice. So do with do with that information what you will. I think in addition to what you just said there, I think keep an eye on field position and turnovers. 
because I think it's Alabama asking Alabama offensive line and rushing attack. They've averaged 2.9 yards per carry this season. Um, Sorry, that's Texas A&M's rush defense, 2.9 yards per carry giving up. Can Alabama get enough consistency out of that group? We saw when um, last week against Mississippi State, Milrow was very efficient in the passing game, only had 12 pass attempts. I think if, if he has 25, 27, 30, I think it's a bad sign for Alabama. I think if yep. it's closer to 20, I think they probably uh, win here. So I think can either one of these teams, given the defensive ability for both, create some short fields, uh, can they create a turnover? And I think you know if you're A&M, can you find a way to just keep Jalen Milrow in the pocket, take away those rush lanes, make him beat you from the pocket? If he beats you from the pocket, tip your cap because – he hasn't done it this year. He's you know, the mobility, the big plays downfield. So I think a lot of reasons here to pick a and I think I have to go with you and take the Aggies as well. Uh, and here's the other thing uh, with Alabama. Sacks allowed. They are not protecting the quarterback. Uh, they have 20 sacks allowed right now. That is 127th in the nation. Not good when you're going up against a team that had 14 sacks in the last two games. So Aggies at home, outright, on the money line. Gig them. 